communities are not set up to succeed. There are laws that kind of serve as a disincentive for big companies to invest in your reserve. And because so very few of us get higher education, we're not very employable anyways if, if the company does set up something there. So the best thing you can do as an individual, as a First Nations person for your community, as a young person, is to leave and to go out and to get an education. And if you can go work in Paris for a year, or London, England, or Moscow, or Rio de Janeiro, or New York City, if you can get out and work in the financial markets, or work for a huge energy company, or a huge oil and gas company, and you can become a certified general accountant, or a certified management accountant, or a lawyer, or a financier, you can come back to your community and you can do a hundred times more good for them than if you stay and you don't go to school and you don't become a financier. That's the reality. That's the truth. And corporate life is not all that hard. Running my charity, the National Average Achievement Foundation, I worked twice as hard and got paid three times less. Now as a corporate executive, I get paid three times more and I work half as hard. It's not as hard as you think. But you have to have a little bit of knowledge. You have to gain the knowledge. You have to gain the insight. 25 years ago, I had a degree in music. And I wasn't a producer. I wasn't a fundraiser. I didn't go to school to learn any of it. But the knowledge is out there. You can read about it. Reading is free. You can find almost anything on the internet. Today, I'm learning about the hydro business. I'm not an engineer, but I'm learning about it. I could probably pull off developing and building my own hydro project from what I've learned in the company that I work with. I could probably start my own company and do it now. But that's because I go out and look for the information. I don't sit around just sort of twiddling my thumbs. I go out and say, what do you do? What do you do? Teach me this. Teach me what you know. Teach me what you know. I'm sort of that Borg guy, you know, those Star Trek stuff, the Borg who sort of absorbs you and everything. That's what we need in our First Nations community. Uh, and Chief Louis is quite right. We're never, every government, we talk about sovereignty, we talk about a First Nations community. What's the difference between a First Nations community and a mainstream city? What, what, makes, a, what makes a community sovereign? Two things. You have your own money, and whatever rules you make up, whatever laws you make up, you have your own army that you can enforce it. All right? Military and your own dollar, and those are the two major, yes, you have laws and, and a constitution and all that, but First Nations have laws. We have our own little community constitutions. We don't have our own dollar because we don't have our own community, and we certainly don't have our own military, so we can't really tell Canada to go away. We can't force them because they have a dollar, the Canadian dollar, a monetary system, and they've got a military, and we don't. So when we say we're sovereign, we can pretend we're sovereign, we can assert our historical and ancient sovereignty, but in practicality and function we can't. And we can continue that argument forever. Or the smart thing we can do is make sure our young people get an education and, under, and connect to the systems of society, connect to the mainstream. I look at all these businesses out there and all the people who are employed and the trillions and trillions of dollars that are being made, we're not making any of it. Most of our community leaders and chiefs don't even know what the businesses are. They're trying, but they're overwhelmed. And your generation, our population is, is tripling. The young people in the Aboriginal community, the population is tripling. If we have the unemployment rates we have now, what will we do in 25 or 30 years? So it's very, very important, this issue of education. I created the National Aboriginal Achievement Foundation because most of our people made fun of somebody for doing something slightly different. If you wanted to be a ballerina, for example, if you were a young woman and you wanted to be a ballerina, our young people would make fun of that person. Instead of saying, oh, you're talented, we, we think that's great, good for you, we hope that you, you know, you're happy and you're enjoying dancing and doing what you're doing, we'd criticize those people. And I thought, gee, that's really wrong. Something is terribly wrong in our community. When instead of supporting young people in whatever they want to do, we say, you shouldn't do that because that's not the Indian thing to do. There is, no, there is no such thing as the Indian thing to do. You can be a mechanic, you can be an investment banker, 
You can be a ballerina. Doesn't mean you're less native. You're born with a culture. You're born with a set of attributes. And you're a vessel, a human being. You're an individual. You are then born to develop yourself. And that's what's very important. 